What's up guys? Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to check out, um, it's actually a script that allows you to quickly create cities inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this is something I'm planning on doing just about weekly um, where we talk about different add-ons for Blender and other things that can make it more powerful um, by doing different things. So in the first video I wanted to talk a little bit about the brand new city scatter tool from Curtis Holt. So um, I saw a video about this on YouTube last week and I wanted to go check it out. And uh, so you can find this tool um, at Curtis Holt's Gumroad page and there's a free version and also a complete version. So the free version is zero dollars obviously the complete version is seven dollars. So and you can just click on this and you can you can actually name a price for this so if you decide it's worth more than that you can do that as well. But when you download this basically what this is is this is a script that runs inside of Blender. And what it does is it generates cities based on settings that you set inside of your models. So the first thing to note about this is that it is more of a script than an add-on in the sense that you don't install it, you just open the script. And it's gonna open up a page that looks like this. One thing that's gonna be very important when you first get it is you wanna go down to text and make sure you click on run script. So if you don't run script and you search for this, so if you do an F3 and search for city generator, nothing's gonna show up. Um, but if you go down to text, run script, and you run this, then if you search for the city scatter tool, you can see how that's in here and you can run this in order to uh, generate your cities. And so the way this works is this takes a collection. So in this situation, he's got a collection of buildings in here and it'll scatter it in a way that creates a city. And so what this does is this generates a really cool result. This is really good for like background cities and other things like that. And notice if you click on this, if you buy the paid version, you get these buildings that actually have materials applied to them and they've got like lights associated with them and things like that. So um, if you get that version, then you get these uh, city models in here as well. I think you get kind of placeholder models if you do the free version. Um, but the way this script works, and we'll talk a little bit later about how to add your own buildings in here. The way the script works though is you just uh, search for a tool. So I'm just going to type in F3. You can just type in city and that's going to pop up options for rectangular and circular city scatter. And so let's talk first about the rectangular city scatter. So when you run this, what it does is it's going to take all of the buildings in a collection that you design. So in this situation, for example, we've got a collection labeled buildings and it's going to scatter them based on settings that you create. And so you can adjust the seed. What the seed's gonna do is that's just going to take these in a different order. So it's gonna give you a different result. So you can move this however you want in order to get different results to try this and get something that you really like. But then down below, there's options in here for things like the size on the X and Y axis. So notice, for example, if I increase this on the X and Y axis, it's increasing the number of rows of buildings that are in here. So if I was to set this to something like 25, then I'm gonna get 25 rows of buildings. So on the Y, if I set that to 25, I'm gonna get 25 rows of buildings um, on the Y axis as well. So you can see how this is randomly placing in the, these in here. And notice again, that if you adjust the seed, the placement of those buildings is going to adjust as well. And so right now, these are placed in here kind of on a grid. And so when they're placed in here on a grid, they're getting placed based on this cell size option. And so your buildings are as close together or as far apart as you set this cell size. So notice how I set this cell size larger. So if I move this up to like four or five, I'm getting more space in between my buildings. And so that's one thing about this is you can set this up where it runs these in um, different rows and they're kind of on a grid right now. Or if you select this option for random placement, what that's gonna do is that's gonna randomly place these um, inside of the size that you've selected. So if I do that and I reduce the, my cell size, for example, you'll notice that I'm getting buildings in here, but they're not necessarily on a row like the ones were before. So that means that they're not necessarily on the grid that they were in before. So you can see how these have more of a random placement if you select the option for random placement. And you can also set these so that they have a rotation variation or not just by checking this box. So you can use this to really quickly create a city that uh, could sit like back in the background um, or as you get closer, it gives you a really cool city for context, things like that. And so before we get into the circular scatter tool, let's 
let's talk about how to do this with your own custom buildings. So for example, I've got some buildings that I'm gonna bring in real quick um, for more of like a post-apocalyptic scene. And so I'm gonna bring a couple of those in and then we're gonna scatter those. And so I've got these three buildings that I wanna scatter. And notice what I've done is I brought them in and I've put them in a collection labeled Apocalypse. And so what I'm gonna do now is instead of using the buildings collection as my seed, instead I'm gonna run this I'm going to run city scatter rectangular. And then for my collection name, instead of having that be buildings, I'm going to name this apocalypse. And I'm going to bring my X and Y size down. And notice there's something odd about this, which we'll talk about in a second. But for now, I'm going to bring my X and Y size down to 10 and 10. We'll leave our cell size at one for right now. But one thing you're gonna notice about this is these buildings are actually coming in wrong. And the reason they're coming in wrong is because these have had a rotation applied to them um, that we didn't apply um, before we ran the city generator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo this. And I'm gonna make sure for each one of these objects that we apply rotation and scale. so that they actually come in on the right axis. So object, apply, rotation, and scale. Now, if I run city generator or city scatter, rectangular, you can see how this is actually scattering my buildings, but my cell size isn't big enough. So they're all on top of each other. So I'm gonna make this cell size bigger. So maybe something like 25. And then I'm gonna minimize this. I'm gonna take my original collection. I'm gonna turn that off. But now if we look at this, you can see how this has generated a city in here by randomly placing these buildings that we have. And one thing we want is we wanna add a little bit of rotation variation. And notice how we can adjust the seed. To adjust which buildings are getting placed the most. And obviously you'd want a few more buildings in here if you were gonna have this many. Um, maybe if you did something a little bit smaller, like maybe a five by five, the repetition wouldn't be quite so noticeable. So obviously you're gonna want a couple more building models if you're gonna do something like this that aren't quite so distinct. But notice how I can use this in order to basically spread these out. And I could set this to have random placement in here as well. So just making sure that I set my cell size to be enough that these buildings aren't on top of each other. So you can see how when scattering these like this, um, it's really easy to do using this tool. And so if we load the circular scatter, option or the circular scatter file that comes in um, when you first load this, you can see how what this one does is it works a little bit differently. What this one does is it uh, scatters everything in a circle. So first thing again, when you get into this, is make sure you run this script so that the tool actually shows up. But this tool works a little bit differently in the sense that you can set um, groups that occur more often. So when you run this one, and we'll go ahead and run city scatter circular. So just type in F3 look for city and click on the circular option. What this one does is this takes a large group of buildings, a medium group of buildings and a small group of buildings and it scatters them based on location. So for example, this one, um, you can set the boundary for larger buildings. So a lot of the time, if you look at cities, um, what you have is you have a number of tall buildings and then medium buildings that kind of go out from there and then smaller buildings. Well, this kind of tries to replicate that by giving you three groups. And so notice if I make my uh, tall buildings radius bigger, so if I was to set this to like 10, notice that my radius for the buildings contained inside the tall group inside of my, uh, my collection over here, um, those get spread along a 10 radius. And then the medium buildings are getting spread um, inside of a, a 13 radius. And then the small are set within a 15 radius from the center point. So you can see how you can use this in order to generate the taller buildings around the middle, and then the medium and small buildings around the perimeter. And uh, you can do the same thing with radius that you could with your uh, X and Y grid. So for example, I could make this twice as big by setting my radius to 40. 
And what this does is this uh, basically generates a maximum number of buildings. So for example, right now this is set to 200. Well, if I wanted to, I could set my max buildings to 400. You can see how I'd get twice as many buildings in here. So for the circular scatter tool, there's more options for the way you can control things kind of come together. And uh, again, we'll go ahead and we'll set this. So the small buildings are like, we'll say 30. The medium buildings, like 20 and my large radius is maybe like 15 and again notice how you can adjust the seed in here to adjust the buildings that are getting placed so you can use this to quickly place all of these and uh, you can also set the neighbor threshold so your neighbor threshold, if we look at this from the top down, is going to adjust how close these buildings are generated compared to others. So if I was to run this up to something like 10, you can see I get a lot less buildings because what this is doing is this is basically uh, checking these buildings around a certain radius. And uh, it's using that radius to determine where your buildings are to keep them from overlapping. So if you want things to be super tight, you could set this down to something like one. And you can see how there's a lot less space in between these, especially depending on the seed that you put in here. So you can use that in order to set the minimum distance between buildings. And then down below the max cycles, what this is doing is this is going through and this is checking for locations that buildings can go into. Um, but at the moment, um, the way that this works is this could just go on and keep checking locations over and over again forever. And uh, what you would do is you would run into an infinite loop and your program would lock up. So what this does is it sets the maximum number of times that this can go through and check for different buildings. so that you don't get stuck in that loop. So, and then you can also set your own custom uh, collections for your large, medium, and small, either by moving buildings into these folders or by creating your own. So, for example, if I was to create one that was like Apocalypse Tall, So if I was to create a location labeled Apocalypse Tall and put one building in it, so we'll just search for city, city scatter circular, and then we could replace this, this building's large, with Apocalypse Tall. You can see how what this would do is this would uh, basically spread that building that you had in that folder around the middle instead. And so for this one, probably I would want a smaller radius, so maybe a radius of like five, so that I would have less of these buildings. Probably set my neighbor threshold up a little bit, just to make sure I got a little bit more spacing and you'd have to play around with this a little bit, but you can see how you could add your own custom buildings to the middle of this as well. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Do you like this tool? Do you like this style of video? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.